Marcus Marty grew up in Switzerland. From age four on, he biked everywhere, uh, spent his career in hospitality and film production, uh, moved to New York, spent 15 years there, and Marcus says he rode somewhere every day of the year. Uh, he has run the New York Marathon. He's biked 150 miles from New York to Montauk and swum around Manhattan Island. Uh, he and his family moved to Westport in 2020. And when Marcus moved here, he found to his surprise that uh, biking was more difficult than in New York City. So last year, Marcus helped to start Bike Westport. It is a nonprofit with the goal of making bicycling and walking uh, better and safer all around town. So Marcus, welcome to 06880, the podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks, so Dan. the first question, did you bike here to the library? You know, just to be sure that I know what to answer, I did. You did? <laughs> and of course, you could argue on a, on a winter day, um, of course, it's, it's convenient and, and more comfortable to be in a, in a warm-up car, but there have been days when I had meetings at the library and if I had driven the car, it would have taken me two to three times longer. At certain times in the day, wow. coming from the train station, I, it, it's actually a shortcut for me to just come up Imperial Avenue. So I, it was a necessity at the time to come by bike. And today it was just that I can say, yes, I came by bike. <laughs> So you, you bike everywhere, e even in town, uh, and, and you've found that the experience here is different than Switzerland and New York. I do, and, and of course, I'm also n I'm new to the town. I'm new to living in, 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 a, in a suburb versus growing up in Switzerland. Where I grew up in a, in a town called Basel, um, obviously much, much smaller than New York City, but... It was still, it's a, city. Uh, it's a city. And so, you know, I grew up with, with the infrastructure of, of, of cycling being part of how, the, how, how people got around. Um, uh, what I just, what I notice here um, is just that, that cycling almost doesn't exist. And, and just to clarify, when I say cycling, I don't mean the people that go out on the weekends um, that are, you can call them like, very skilled cyclists and they the put in distance. The ones who look like speed. Lance Armstrong. That's right. right. That's right. They can, I think they can look after themselves, but I'm more thinking, you know, when I take my kids and ride to the beach or when I ride them to school, I can, I can feel how me on a bike in, in the town, the cars are, are not used to um, having bikes on the road. And they, it's almost like we don't know how to coexist. And I think that's, and, that's a bummer, right? And, and I, I'm fascinated that you said that cycling is more dangerous or, or you feel less safe here than in New York. Yeah, I mean, look, I definitely um, had a few moments in the city when, when uh, you could argue that, it, you know, and when you look at the statistics, of course, there are, there are traffic deaths um, every year. Um, but I, what I find a big difference going back to the drivers being aware. I don't think any driver in New York City can just turn into a street these days without checking if there is a bike because there are so many bikers, so many cyclists mm -hmm. that commute, you know, now with the city bike program, the public uh, program. There, you have to expect a and bike everywhere. The delivery people. The delivery people. So, so it's... Right, and we, we rely on those to, to get our food in time. So, so you have like a lot of, a lot of that, and, and that would, that's what made me feel safer. And you had, you know, the, the, the infrastructure, even during those years that I was living in New York City, has changed drastically. Um, it's still, you know, you could argue a crazy place to ride a bike. No, but, but I, they're, they're talking about widening the bike lanes in New York. Uh, and, yeah. and meanwhile, here in West... So, so what got you to Westport in... 2020 was it covid it was definitely covid yeah we were we were living in and uh, the upper west side at the time in a tiny apartment with a with a with our first child and uh when 
when getting pregnant with the second uh, that we were expecting during the pan the summer the first pandemic summer we knew that we had to leave the city so it, it just helped us make that that uh move sooner so why westport why westport we interestingly enough we had good friends already living here so we always enjoyed visiting them but then um ultimately it was family my wife's family um had a we had an opportunity to move in in their place um even if it was just at the time temporary uh -huh. um we're not leaving <laughs> <laughs> no reason to leave no reason to leave so you moved here and you hopped on your bike and what did you find i just i mean i i enjoyed the the fact that i'm now in a place where i can ride my bike to the beach and you know instead of living in a in a concrete jungle um but i just i again going back to the the fact that i i, I found i found no bike lanes i found no no way for me to be on the road without being an inconvenience to the to the cars and i think that's one one major point of what i think what we're trying to to achieve is that that uh to uh just somebody quoted this in a nice way to to get um peace on the road get everyone a piece of the road right um i don't want to feel like i'm an inconvenience to cars i don't want to slow anybody down um from getting to where they need to go and and i think the, the misconception for drivers is that i am doing that and i'm 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 a burden on them my my theory is if we find a way to coexist i could probably maybe over over time contribute to to fixing the traffic problem because i find that many i'm i don't have any statistics so don't quote me on that but i found that there's probably many trips that people do with a car that are not really necessary the drivers would say that that the bikers bicyclists are part of the problem because they don't stop it traffic red lights or stop signs that they you know ride two or three abreast um so is is part of the blame on on the cyclists i think i mean you know going through the comment section of the articles you wrote about bike westport there's some very entertaining um <laughs> very entertaining pieces and i mean i'm i'm not going to deny that that's that doesn't help the the um the the way cyclists are seen on the road you know the the running through stop signs and the um riding uh, across the road um but at the same time i want to clarify that what we're trying to achieve is not just not to create a race track for for those let's call them sunday riders mm -hmm. um i i want to make it possible for for anyone uh, of any skill level um to ride safely in in the street any skill level any age but yes i mean f from a from a, an image perspective they're they're not helping right, right. but at the same you know i it, it's entertaining to see this whole blaming the other you know and i and i get that and i'm not i'm not i don't want to protect those um that are that are you know blocking cars from sure. going on their way um but I think there too, there, there's a solution to this. Uh -huh. And that's what, I guess what we're trying to find. So let's talk about Bike Westport. Mm -hmm. how, how did you start it? How did you find people uh, that you wanted to work with? And, and, and what do you guys do? So I think the, one of the first con, um, conversations I had was with Peter Gold. I had the idea. I knew Pete, Peter's an RTM representative uh, and head of the transit committee. Right. Um, I know I was I was introduced to Peter because I was talking to a, a neighbor about what I wanted to do because I felt like there's definitely there's there's so much potential here, and and that neighbor introduced me to Peter Gold, and I he came over and we we sat down and and I think it was sort of. It was this, the encouragement from Peter for me to do this that really then got me to sit down and, you know, design a website and just say, you know, why not? 
Um, and after that, I started meeting um, other individuals, Adam Ganser, um, uh, a friend and, and obviously extremely um, valuable, mm-hmm. um, we can call him an advisor to this, uh, to this undertaking. He used, to, uh, he used to be part of the Highline uh, for many years. And, uh, he helped design it, right? He helped. He helped. Yeah, yeah. Bring it where it, where it is now. Yeah. So that's it's very, it's a good uh, good reference to have. So uh, Adam is a very helpful um, resource for me to 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 just you know think about big picture questions. Um, and uh, and then in the end, I I I also have thanks to. Um, just talking about this, I, I have many people. Some people just reach out through the website. They write an email to me and say, "Hey, I'd like to get involved." And and quite frankly, I I have not even I I need to find the time to mm-hmm. and the format to to get you know get get that help because I could use it. And and what's the goal exactly? What are your concrete uh, ambitions? Right. I think in a very, without getting too much into the technical aspect, because I'm, I'm not an engineer, but the goal is to, to create a, a, a bike path network throughout Westport, connecting the main points of interest, so to say. You know, you have, this, you have the schools, you have your everyday places you need to go to, like a, a grocery store. Um, you have the library, you have the beaches, um, and the train station, of course, that should allow commuting without having to drive a car to the train st- to and from the train station. So, and that bike ne- network, in a uh, bike path network, in a in a perfect world, would be separate from the main roads, because again, going back to, my goal is not to to cannibalize. Um, uh, roadways that that are already um, you know overused in a way so the goal would be where where can we go through without um, without uh, competing with the cars and I think it'll be impossible to avoid having shared roadways in certain places mm-hmm. but um, but at least uh, th- th- I think there is ways to to go about that and I had a very interesting meeting with a with a, a local architect and planner called Bruce Becker, a brilliant guy who who, who came to our house and and we, we looked at a huge map of Westport and we just started drawing the most amazing bike path network um, Westport has ever seen, and you know and and I think some parts of it are are realistic um, achievable goals within. Not, you know, a lot. For, for example, I mean, you know, I think there's there's stretches towards the beach on Campo Road South, which are are wide enough where we could, um, I don't want to say easily, but where we could put in um, a double lane bike lane on one side of the road, because mm-hmm. um, there, there's not even a need to do it on each side. You can just put it, you know, like think of Longshore along the golf course. You just put a, a separated bike lane in there. And then separate it from the cars, so that you know the two are not um, the, the bikers are, are are safe from the the cars, and yeah. you know the the cars won't have to uh, complain about those um, the Sunday riders anymore. <laughs> so that's like a more a, a very practical way I think we could start improving it. Um, and then there are some more bold, okay. ambitious goals. <laughs> and and have you? Have you been talking with town officials about this? I've met with uh, with uh, first select woman Tucker and Pete Rakovich. Uh, it was last summer over over Zoom because I was in in Switzerland at the time. Pete, Pete is the head of uh, public works, right? And uh, I really I really like uh, Pete, and I would love to I would love to continue the conversation. At the time, it was it felt more like an initial um, meeting. I think. Once we have more concrete ideas, which which we actually have just put together, we'd love to continue that conversation. Um, we're also, you know, there's a big, uh, an incredible, you know, opportunity for Westport, the the 
the safe uh, safe streets for all traffic study uh, that's ongoing right now that's a federal grant of uh, of almost five hundred thousand dollars that has been given to the town uh, the town is then contributing um, twenty percent to it so it's actually over five hundred thousand dollars that's dedicated to conducting a, f a full um, traffic study to create safer streets. And you're making sure that bicycling is included in that because usually when people think about safer streets, they're talking about drivers. And, right, and right. Like Our goal is to, we, we don't want to give the impression that we're not grateful for that kind of money given for a study. Um, it's not even work alone, it's just a study. But our goal is that we can use this chance to to see what are the opportunities to to let everyone be part of the um, the uh, sort of traffic system. You know, we, we talk about biking a lot. I think walking and pedestrian roadways is goes goes hand in hand with that mm -hmm. for me. Are we talking about a lot of money? You know, what does it cost to put in a bike lane, or are, are there other I costs wish. associated with it? Um, I know Pete could really speak to this and could kill the dream. Um, <laughs> I, I think it doesn't have to necessarily cost a lot everywhere. Um, I also don't think we would be, th this is something where you would tear up roads and repave them just because you add a bike lane. I think it could start with little things like whenever there is any construction going on on a road and something gets repaved that and and i think there's laws in other towns that 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 dictate that that before you just go back and repaint you have to ask yourself is there anything we can do to make this a more complete street yeah. and to me that is that is essentially something that may not even cost at all um and, you know, then there's another argument, and I, I don't want to get too anecdotal here, but there are, there's research showing that more narrow roadways are actually safer um, for various reasons, but one being drivers are more alert to actually focus on their driving and not distracted with other things. They won't drive as fast. And, and I mean, if I, I remember attending a town meeting and Pete was talking about the cost of, of paving roads if you think about um, if you think about that and you know having narrow roads it's it, it's less money to spend on that or you could argue you add a bike lane to it you keep wow. them as wide but again that's I'm not an engineer so I don't want to get that go down that sure. rabbit hole uh, you did a survey yeah. and you got a ton of responses um, what, what are some of the takeaways from that survey I think one of the main, I mean, to your point about the ton of response is the fact that a, a survey in a town like Westport brings in 1,600 responses to me is a, a great number. And it's a lot maybe of people. And maybe it's not even so much about the number itself. It's, to me, it means it's an amazing sample to know this is, this is a, an opinion, this is a meaningful opinion. Um, what was surprising about it was the amount of people. I always thought when, when setting out to do this, I thought I'm going to have all these young families with kids that are going to stand behind this idea, but not sure how much support I'll get from other, other uh, demographics and generations. But surprisingly, over 50% are, are, um, old, uh, are not people that have uh, kids younger than 18 in their households. So it's good to know that even, you know, true Westporters um, feel the need for that. Sure. And, and what did they say? What, what are they looking for? What are they? I would say the, the main, I mean, a, a lot of them, you, a lot of them ride a bike once a week or so. Many of them is more for recreational and fitness purposes, not so much commuting. But they, I mean, we, we kind of all agree, including the drivers that were responding to this survey or the questions that sort of was targeted for from a driving perspective. It was to, you know, to add, add dedicated bike lanes. And I can see how that is a goal from either side that, that would help um, to, you know, keep the right, keep the 
the bicyclists off the road in terms of off the driving road and, and vice versa. We were talking before about you and, and your riding. And you mentioned that every day you take your oldest son to King's Highway and your other child to Earth Place uh, preschool. And you take him in a trailer on your bike. That's right. That's you want, right. Want to talk about that route? I, yeah, I recently, um, because we also have a, a newborn at home, um, my my usual workouts in the morning, my my fitness routine in the morning has changed a little. I I can't just go to the Y at five thirty <laughs> and put in my swim. So um, I started. Um, I you know we live at the train station, so technically I could go up Riverside to Kings Highway, but I decided recently that I'm, I started going up uh, Imperial, the scenic route, um, over past... The, over the Krabari Bridge. Over the Krabari Bridge, up Imperial Avenue, um, past the, the library, and then back over um, the the uh, the bridge, in the Main, Main Street Bridge. Yeah, the Ruth Steinkraus uh, right. Cohen Bridge. And then onto Riverside, back down to... Uh, um, to Burr Road and then up up the hill to the school to Kings Highway and then I drop the first one off and then I continue for a tiny stretch on Post Road which is it just feels wrong to be on that road with a bike and I know that um, luckily the traffic is actually around that time in in the um, in the direction I'm going is is almost on non-existent and it's really just like you could call it like half a block. <laughs> and then I'm on on um, Woodside Avenue, back up where it's it's quiet and it feels like feels like a place where you could ride a bike. Wow. Um, yeah, and it's a it's a good workout because they're what, getting heavy. What does that do for you? Those forty five minutes on a on a bike. I mean, I I'm a very active person. I I think I I strive with with um, with getting my exercise in and. And I think, I mean, it's, it's, you know, the fact that I'm able to, to drop my kids off at school, it, I think for their experience to not just sit in the, in, in the back of a car, but being able to sort of be part of the journey um, and sit in that, in that trailer and, you know, and, and take it all in, how we just ride through this town. And, you know, eventually my goal will be maybe with the, the temperatures coming up in the spring, my goal might be to to bring my five-year-old to, to King's Highway on a bike. Wow. And, but that part, again, is just, it's, it's tricky. I'm, um, I don't want to put my child into danger just because I have an agenda that I want to, sure. you know, follow. But, but at the same time, my goal is to, to enable that for people to do, you know. And we, we, we should, next spring, I want to start riding to... To, to school by bike with, with kids, you know, if there's, I'm sure there's other parents that would do it too. Wow. Um, you, you have a story about the first time you rode to King's Highway and asked about bike racks. <laughs> right. Um, I hope uh, the principal is not, still, n not mad at me <laughs> still about that. She did, um, she did mention your, your, uh, your um, article mention. No, I, I, um, it was the first day of school and I, I showed up and I asked where the bike racks would be, um, and where I, where I would drop off my child when coming by bicycle. And, uh, yeah, the, the individual just looked at me and, and was somewhat confused by my question. I had never had and that question never, before. Never, never had that question before. And, and again, I, I didn't blame her for not knowing that. It's not like I'm... Um, expecting that again that they've had that, um, but it was just like funny. It was just a, the perfect kind of response that yeah. I needed to say clearly. There's something we need to there, do here. There, there's a need here. But then on 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 a, um, I think that was actually before uh, it was like a, a meet the teachers kind of thing. And then on the actual first school day, the the principal was standing in the doorway, and she said, "You know, I read the article." <laughs> and we're working on that bike rack. That's, that's all you can ask for. Yeah, no, she she's actually I've I've met with her in the meantime. She's extremely supportive 
uh, Tracy Carbone, the principal of, of Kings Highway, I really, I really appreciate how welcoming and, and how, how open she is to, to work with me on a, on a, on a bike bus. Uh-huh. You, have you heard of, of, uh, I have not. So a, a bike bus is, it's a sort of a, it's metaphorical in a sense that you have an, a, an adult, like a, a leader on the road that is the bus driver on a bike and then you have kids that follow. And I think in a, in a, in a neighborhood where maybe not on a street like Riverside, but the idea is that the bike bus starts at a certain point and then rides to school and at every intersection you'd have more kids joining yeah. and then it becomes a whole movement. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is being done ev- everywhere. Uh, it, it's a whole, um, it's a whole thing. We have um, um, an advocate from from uh, Fairfield, Sarah Roy, who's been very supportive to to also helping me sort of find uh, the right narratives. She she's done it in Fairfield. Um, I I'd like to do it here. Um, I'm still working through the you know the the complexities of getting sure. things like that approved. Um, because the last time I tried, the the town town's attorney came back and said, "You need a a permit that needs to be applied for ninety days in advance." Um, wow. And I th- so so I think there may be a, a a small misconception about what we're trying to do here, because what we're trying to do is get kids to be independent and ride their bikes to right. school, <laughs> and not do street closures with right. a police escort. But I mean, I I I know the police will be actually is more than happy to to help and assist with these things so we just need to find the right format sure. to doing it and and that's what bike westport is is doing so just a couple of uh quick questions to finish up here your favorite spot in westport to ride my favorite spot in westport to ride sherwood island with the kids, I mean that's a that's where my five year old for um, learned his first pedaling um, a year ago. Uh-huh. We just brought him there. He he was not having the idea of uh, riding a pedal bike. Uh, he was very into his balance bike, and I said to him, "Look, I'll I'll bring both, and you can just you know suit yourself." And then he just from that day he never looked back. Wow, it's just a it's a wonderful open space with all these paths and. And and uh, yeah, that was a that was a fun place to start. Is there any place in Westport that you are terrified of riding? I mean, Post Road. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that yeah, I guess that's a no brainer. It's yeah, I think. And you know what? Sadly, one of the most terrifying places is the train station. That wow. underpass, um, the underpass near um, Stony Point, near yes. Dona Crazy. I mean, both of them, but it's this like going underneath that um, that railroad underpass, and the 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 li- there's you know there's no visibility. The cars that come from from un- under that tunnel, they just they're like in the middle of the lane. People rushing to people get to rushing a train. through to to maybe make a train or you know drop somebody off or it's it's terrifying and I wow. and when I you know I regularly ride um, with my kids to to needs um, to needs bakery through that through that route and and I every time I'm like is this am I gonna regret you know wow. getting them to do that but it's again it, for me it's just like I want them to be able to do to be independent and, and enjoy that freedom. And I know they love it. You know, there's and going back to what, what my favorite part is when we ride to, to the Compo beach, you know, we're lucky enough to have that secret, maybe I, sh- I shouldn't mention it, but the, <laughs> the crossing over the railroad bridge, um, the pedestrian crossing. And so w- once we are on the other side, we can ride Ferry Lane East and then get on Compo road South, which has a, which has a sidewalk, yeah. which, because there's not too many walkers in the town, we I can have the kids ride on that sidewalk, and then there's an there's you know grass between the the, the road and sure. and them, and so, and it's so fun to see them you know fly down across the you know past the longshore 
and getting to the beach, being able to ride to the beach with yeah. your kids. That's, and then ride around the beach. And ride around the beach, sure. yeah. Uh, somebody who's listening to this, they, they may be never ridden or haven't ridden in a while. What's your advice to them? Get involved. <laughs> no, I think... Um, I don't want to... Right? I don't want to encourage people to put themselves into danger if they don't feel safe. I think um, there are places to ride that are safer. It's, it's, um, I don't have the, the bandwidth at the moment to, to take my bike on a car and then go somewhere. So that's why I just I do it around town. And it's also for me, it's like that's how I like to get around. I like to be active this way. Um, but for people that are, um, are we saying like people that are f afraid of riding that used to ride? Yeah. You know, for whatever reason, they, they don't ride around town. You know, if they would like to do that, I mean, I, I can't stress enough to, to a get in touch with, with bike Westport. Um, you know, your blog has very generously written about us. So there's, there's various ways of, of reaching us and, the website and, and is... get in touch. And the website is bikewestport.org. Um, and then equally as important, um, get in touch with your local RTM. Uh, I think, you know, we, we've been in touch, Peter Gold, Jenny Johnson, um, there, there are members of the RTM who are very supportive of the idea. And, and I, um, you know, after we've had this talk, I know I'll be reaching out to them, sharing the, the survey results. And I think, you know, we've, we've made an impact that we, people know about us. I'm not saying that we, you know, we're still a young organization and we have a lot of work to do, but, you know, getting in touch with the local RTMs will, will make them aware of, of, I think, more specific, um, neighborhood specific, uh, needs. Sure. Um, because at this point I am more, I'm more trying to create a vision of what, what the, the whole town could be. Uh, and, um, you know, back to the, the bike path network, the idea is to create this, this main network and then you can have individual neighborhoods feed into that mm -hmm. so that in the end, one day, no matter where you live in Westport, you should be able to ride a bike to the beach, which would be great. great. The future of biking in Westport and we've enjoyed talking with Marcus Marty here, the, uh, one of the founders of bike Westport dot org and marcus you'll get on your bike now and ride home that's right thank you very much for having me dan thank you